All right, we have a court reporter. Let's move to appearances, please. Thank you. Gabriela Ramazzo for the plaintiff, Melvin Marcos Sonata. Michael Schlesinger for the defendant, Ms. Caldera. I don't know who everybody else is, Your Honor. I don't know if there's witnesses here, but I would invoke the witness rule. I would also invoke the witness rule. I, I don't know who's here. And Your Honor, present is a certified Portuguese interpreter, Elizabeth Davis. Okay, let's begin. Uh, judge, it's my motion, so I will just give you a very short introduction of what I'm going to do, and I'm going to call my client as a witness. Um, okay. As you, as you know, Your Honor, from the last hearing, it is our contention that the complaint that is before you omits very uh, material facts that would, uh, in essence, pervert the legal system uh, by not having these included, uh, including uh, some various criminal uh, prosecutions and things that have occurred in the past. In addition, uh, you'll hear from my client um, a lot of the stuff that you that they're saying is defamatory is First Amendment protected. It's um, opinion. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the uh, opposition that was put into this motion, you'll see under the op applicable rules, these are things that we can't possibly prove they're true. For example, whether or not Mr. Nito was uh, bribing officials or doing things in Brazil. Or, and that's the, the, the essence of uh, the fraud on the court. You'll see that it's basically a um, strike suit to to uh, put my client back into submission. So I, my first witness will be uh, Ms. Kent Daly. Maria, you have to, you have to un okay. unmute. Um, Your Honor, the interpreter will just ask, uh, like, we'll be here waiting when it's uh, time to interpret. Okay. And Maria, you're on mute still. Does she speak English? Yes. Okay. Okay. Jackie, go ahead and swear them with this. Yeah, Madam Clerk. Raise your hand. Raise your right hand. Ms. Clerk, she's still on mute. She's trying. Um, you're looking for the uh, little microphone. Who am I swearing? Who am I swearing in? Ms. Caldera. She's on the left hand side. Judge, she's still having technical. I don't know if you, there's a way you could unmute her as the administrator. Which one is she? Maria Cristina Mendez. Oh, let me see. I don't know if I can. Okay. Let's see. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Raise your right hand for me, please. Yes. Do you, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Judge, before we get started, uh, is the witness recording back there in the back of her? Seems like she is, Your Honor. I don't. I didn't give her any admit, admit initials, so if you would like to tell her the. Um, I cannot to record. I no, don't. you can't record it. Oh no, no. Sorry. Okay. Your Honor, would you be able to ask her to remove the phone from that uh, podium? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Was she sworn in? I, I kind of lost it there. Thank you. Uh, Maria, could you tell the court uh, a little bit about your background? Okay. I am a Brazilian. I come from a traditional family in Brazil. Um, I married Mr. I started living with Mr. Costa Neto in 2000 and I met him in 2093 and uh, I started living with him in 2002. Uh, before this, I used to work for Vogue magazine. I worked for Armani. I worked for Dior. I, I went to school here in the United States. I studied in Boston. I studied in Europe. Uh, I had an background far from politics before I married him. Um, in Brazil, we are not very involved in political issues, at least at that time. Now, Brazil is coming more um, politicized. 
um, but that's my background. So let's go what you're doing presently. What is your present uh, position? What do you do? Um, now I do Uber. I do. Uh, I work as a freelance. I'm a realtor. Um, I work at, to a travel agency as a freelance. I am a realtor as a freelance. I do Uber, so I try to survive. I'm far, far from what I was raised uh, doing. I'm far from uh, my career. Um, everything when I moved to the United States in 2007, my father died in 2009. Um, and from when I moved to the United States in 2017, because I was seeking uh, safety and asylum, because I was tired of having, I had car accidents, I had guns in my head. I had Maria, easier if you let me um, ask you questions, because you're, you're going all over the place respectfully. Um, I asked you what you presently do, and are, do you have any um, career, or are you doing anything to do with women's rights? Yes, I have a 501c that uh, empower women. I'm part of Vital Voices Care in the United States. I'm part of Grupo Mulheres do Brasil. I was part of, uh, in Brazil, I was already an activist for women. Uh, in the beginning, I was talking about domestic violence. So I did speeches for Vacated Mulher and United Nations for domestic violence. Then I got engaged on Grupo Mulheres do Brasil and I created the political uh, committee. Uh, I was engaged with Omni, like there are five major groups of women rights in, in Brazil and I'm engaged with them. Here in the United States, I'm engaged with Vital Voices and CARE and okay. Women's Miami Funds. With regard to the internet or any type of uh, media, do you have any uh, voice or show that you you regularly do? Yes, I am. Uh, since since I divorced him, I devoted a lot of time uh, defending women, defending women's rights, uh, trying to get more women in in public spaces. Brazil has eighty percent of women as Congress and Senate and everything. It's like they, they run for, for politics, but they don't get elected. Uh, so I have a big work with this. I'm trying to create the Emily's list in Brazil. Like the Democrats, they couldn't elect women, so they created Emily's list. I'm trying to create Maria's list to help women get in, in political positions in Brazil, yes, I'm big on this. This is this is my passion, and this is what everything that I've been through uh, it makes a sense once I can help other women uh, be elected or, or, or shift something. Um, this objection, Your Honor, are immaterial and irrelevant. Overruled. She's giving a little background. Uh, yeah, and I'm trying, Your Honor, uh, I'm going to be getting to the actual allocations, but I wanted you to understand what her uh, role is now in politics, so they give you a foundation, that's the purpose. Okay. Uh, Maria, um, do you also use Instagram and other um, social media uh, outlets to express your opinion about Brazil and politics? Yes. Yeah, in Instagram, Instagram is my tool. Uh, I don't use X or Twitter. Uh, okay. Instagram is, is Honor, my tool. Your Honor, I didn't hear your um, whether you ruled on my objection. I I overruled it. I said it's just some background. Oh no, I I, I just said that it was leading. I said objection, Your Honor, leading. I don't know if you're able to overruled. Hear. Okay, let's move on. Um, I'm sorry for you being interrupted, Maria. Um, I asked you about Instagram and how you use it for, with regard to your opinions. Could you could you finish your answer, please? So I use Instagram as a way to communicate with women in Brazil, especially women. There's like a, now Brazil is in an edge. Actually, it's uh, the thing with freedom of speech is very interesting because last week Mr. Costa Neto was in the top of a truck in front of 35,000 people defending freedom of speech 
and the defendant being able to yes. your honor. That's not, that wasn't even the question, and it's mis misleading, it's immaterial, it's irrelevant. You have a response to that? Uh -huh. No, Your Honor, I, I, I'm trying to uh, not have her give narrative, so I would agree okay. she's responsive, so I, I'll try to get it get it to where we're going if I have a little leeway. Um, Maria, so let me just caution you, please try to answer the questions that I pose, because we're here for a limited amount of time, and I want the judge to understand what we claim is fraudulent or, or lies or and so on. So um, the question I ask you is, do you use your Instagram or other social media to express your opinion about politics in Brazil? That was the question. Yes, the answer. All right, so now let's turn to Mr. Nito. What is his, when you first uh, met him, what was his position in Brazilian politics? He was the president. No, he, I think he was, when I met him first, he was a congressman, but uh, not, um, he got the presidency of the party not far from when I met. When I met, he was just a congressman. The the president of the party died, Alvaro Valle, and then he became the president of Partido Liberal. Okay. So th there are several... Th have you read the complaint that was filed by Mr. Nito against you? Yes. Okay. Uh, could you tell the court what role you had in the prosecution and ultimate conviction of Mr. Nito in Brazil um, on criminal charges and when it occurred? Okay. Uh, again, irrelevant material. This is um, her defam def defamatory statements are not related to um, the conviction of in 2012. They, they are related because judge, every Maria, time Maria, time please, please, Maria, please. The judge rules. In her, in her statement, she talks about drug trafficking. She talks about bribery of the judge that is dealing with her inheritance. She talks about all of this other stuff as a matter of fact, not as a matter of opinion. And now she's here today to talk about her, how she spoke in front of the court, which was completely immaterial. The, even the... Um, the attorney that represented Mr. Costa Neto, he uh, provided a declaration showing that what she was stating over there during judge, that time. Judge, is was, it, judge can I, I know this is a speaking objection. What's your objection? Oh. What's your legal objection? My legal objection is that there is no relevance and it's immaterial. My response, or do you want to rule? Yeah, quickly. Uh, it, it's, direct, it, it's directly related to the allegations on her opinion about money laundering. Uh, corruption and what she witnessed and it's being repeated in the alleged statements that they claim are defamatory because he's been found uh, uh, guilty of these things he was pardoned but it's based on her opinion and first-hand knowledge and her and her ability to criticize a, a public figure May I read this? all right the conviction, the conviction in 2012 had to do with another political party called the Partido, uh, Partido dos Trabalhadores. It's the political party of the president of Brazil today, right? They, the conviction had to do with the um, that party, other politicians to rule or vote with within that government system. I'm telling you here now that her statements have nothing to do with that at all. And it was purposely. I know, but I, I don't, I don't, I have to hear the whole thing. I, she's just, the question was, do you, you're still on the question about the Instagram, right? Well, you, uh, yeah, I moved, I moved. Let, let, her, let her speak. It's I mean, probative, probative value. Doesn't overruled. Okay. Overruled. Okay. Go ahead. I, I'm going to put an end to this. this thank, is... thank you. Um, Maria, the, you read the complaint. There are several things that they claim were defamatory. Did you give testimony about the subject matters that they claim are defamatory in the complaint in a Brazilian court under oath? 
yes, and also not only the one that was on the Congress, but I witnessed twice, one in Policia Federal, which will be like the FBI there, and also Ministerio Público, which is prosecutors. So everything that I said was under oath, and everything that I said, I gave the proofs, and I gave, and I said what I witnessed. And, and when she says it has nothing to do, Please don't, res don't respond to opposing counsel. Please just answer the questions. That's what the judge is here. Okay, so you, you are been, you've you been accused of defamatory statements in this complaint. Could you tell the court what you witnessed firsthand so she understands that what is your opinion based on your firsthand knowledge of Mr. Nito's activities? Objection, okay. Your Honor. Again, leading. Oh, okay. You can answer. So, so I, the, everything started when we, we made a trip to Taiwan, and when we made a trip to Taiwan, I tra translated uh, a translator inside of the Minister of, of um, Foreign Relations. Um, we, yes, there was an official uh, translator. Her name was Isabel, but on that lunch, she was not there. And the minister was next to me, was me, and the next person was my ex-husband. And the minister asked me to translate because my, my ex-husband doesn't speak a word of English. Neither Schwong, who was on the table, speaks English. So Isabel was not on the room and he was not on the table. So the minister asked me what happened with the millions he gave to Valdemar during before the elections and i had a dinner with these people from taiwan in brasilia when they came to brazil so this is something you witnessed firsthand was money going between mr nito and foreign bodies yes Correct? okay yes so that was one of the things they said that you repeated in your instagram but these are things that you actually witnessed ma'am yes okay. yes now um you said you gave testimony in front of a government body. What charges was Mr. Nito charged with that you gave testimony under oath to the uh, body about? So there were two different times. One time it was that he was kind of uh, forcing a licitation for uh, Fernando Simões was trash in, in uh, Sao Paulo and he was doing a negotiation with Rui Falcão and Marta Suplicy to make it easy for Julio Simons to win the licitation. Actually, Julio Simons is the airplane that I used to use at least twice, three times a month. Maria, Maria let's, let's focus on, I know, I know you have a story to tell, but that's not for today. Specifically, what charges were you get asked to give testimony on? Do you understand what the question is? So it's it's a conspiracy, it's money laundering, it's uh, enforcing a licitation, um, and this is the, this one. And then on Operação Porto Seguro was a second time. It was buying off judges, or buying off decisions, uh, and it was three times. And the third time was offshores and money. So using casinos to money gamble, to to laundry money, especially specifically in Punta del Este. Okay, yes. Your Honor. Okay, so. All of this is irrelevant, immaterial. Um, none of these were even convictions. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why she's going into all of this when these were not the defamatory statements she made, or that are stated in the complaint. It's just not relevant at all. These are not what you sued her for? No. It's for money laundering statements? Well, you're already uh, you have to read the actual. I don't know why I'm getting interrupted. Yeah. I, I'm trying to be very polite, Judge. I know. Let him, let him, let's just try to get through this. Thank you, Robert. Um, and just so Your Honor knows, this is in her affidavits. I'm trying to give you sworn testimony, not just affidavits. These are things to, re to support that this was opinion and not part of his complaint. He leaves out a lot of the stuff that she gave judicially protected testimony. 
which would be immune from any defam defamatory uh, claims. All right. Um, at some point. That depends. Just, just go ahead. At, at some point, Maria, um, was Mr. Nito actually convicted of the charges that you gave testimony on? Yes, he was. He was sent to jail for, I think, at least the, uh, the, the penalty was like, I don't know, uh, 20 years, but he was, he's, he, he was sent to jail, he stayed in jail, and he was released and pardoned. He, he, the final judgment, I think, was 2012. He was sent to jail, and he stayed in jail until 2017. And afterwards, he was wearing that thing on the ankle. Yes, he was. Wait, he was in. He was in jail for when? I think 2012 until 2017. Because 2017 is when I I moved to U.S. When he was released from pardon from jail, I moved to U.S. for security reasons. Objection, Your Honor. Once again. Oh, and okay. he was he got out because he was pardoned. He said yes, he was pardoned. Um, have you also cooperated with U.S. officials since 2017 uh, in their investigations of Mr. Nito? Yes, they are still under new investigations. Yes, I, I, I cooperated with Agent Trombley, Garrett Trombley. Uh, I met him in New York once a while ago, and I met him in New York uh, not a long time ago. Okay. So, um... Now, there are several allegations. Yeah, that's, that's irrelevant. It, it's a, okay. Overruled. Keep going. There were several allegations about your statements on an Instagram um, uh, report um, that you were speaking. Uh, I think the title was uh, Protecting Democracy in Brazil. Do you recall making certain statements about Mr. Nito and the Brazilian government? Yes. Everything started. I was I was not talking anything about political, and I was just involved in women issues. And then when he filed against, uh, when is he, he is please when you say he so the judge knows in the transcript who is he? Mr. Nato, when Mr. Nato and Mr. Bolsonaro filed against uh, the the results of the elections, and it's interesting to understand that the elections in Brazil have two turns. So the first time that elected his uh, congressman, he was not against, but he was against the second term. Uh, and he was like saying that the result was wrong and, and he's, he, he got even convicted. And when they say the party, he's a person Once again, this is irrelevant and it's incorrect what she's saying. This is completely irrelevant. We're here on defamation. Judge, um, may I respond? I mean, this yeah. is directly out of the, coming out of their complaint. This is this is the actual Instagram. They say all the defamatory statements came out. She was speaking about, and it's quoted in their complaint. I'm trying trying to show you that is that within that again interrupting. I, I don't. I I try to be polite to everybody. Oh, let it, let it, too many too many interruptions. Let it let it go. Let it go. Right, so I, I can cite to their complaint, but the reason I'm asking uh, asking these questions is that he was being investigated. It was public knowledge. We submitted evidence, and that and she's on her Instagram as an influencer saying her opinion. So that's what I'm giving you testimony. And she's getting sued for it now. So that's why we're saying there's certain things that were not raised in the complaint, and I'm going to highlight those. We're, I'm going through his allegations right now. Okay, so you gave a very long Instagram speech. Yes. Now, um, you said in there, according to complaint, that Mr. Nito laundered money. Where did you get that from? He was convicted. I witnessed in Congress. He went to jail for it. Okay, you said but... the, you said in the Instagram uh, speech, at least as it's alleged, that he accepted bribes from Taiwan. Nee's government. Where did you get that opinion from? I witnessed. I was the translator. That's what. That's how my marriage started falling apart. I, when I witnessed that that thing. Okay, you're being alleged to be uh, for saying defamatory statements that Mr. Nito 
paid bribes to Brazilian officials. Where did you get that opinion from? There are so many, like Juquinha, who used to uh, have lunch in my house all the time. He's an investigation with Ferrovias that is not in the in the in the, in any of these investigations. That I witness, I witness all this. Okay. I witness black. I listen. I witness bags of money flying on the airplane on a private plane and getting on the safe of the house. I witness all this, and 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 I witness stuff. Okay, you you're being accused of def defamatory statements, and one of the statements is that Mr. Nito was involved in drug trafficking. Where did you get that opinion from? Yes, there was an article from uh, Mario Carvalho in Folha de São Paulo that what a Garen News that they, they say it's, it's not the Garen News in São Paulo, it's a company, it's an offshore company in Uruguay where he used to play and gamble a lot and I witnessed him losing millions in Bacara. So if, if someone subpoenaed the casinos, they must give this objection. And, and got a news, it's it oh, hold on. There's an objection, you must stop. So the I, same, the same. Maria, you have to stop when there's an objection to the judge rules. She's, she's also giving a, a narrative and relevance that has nothing to do with. Uh, you're on mute, Judge. Why is it not relevant? Because Why do you say that like, you'd sue her for all these? allegations where a lot of them were it sounds like and I mean there's a lot of things that happened this man went to jail for five years this was the whole thing. And well, is it, it it sounds like the only reason he's out is he was pardoned it was politically, he still be there it was it was a politically charged conviction it doesn't matter these are the it's, I mean, what did he go to jail for? Did he go to jail for the things that he he? No, that's what he claimed to... she said about him. No, that's why I'm trying to explain that. She he never went to jail for anything related to her own little statements about Taiwan. He never went to jail for anything related to money laundering for the Mexican cartel, like she states. He never went to jail for any of that, and that, that's what I'm trying to explain. And that's why she's just giving her narratives and. Providing you with information that is irrelevant. It's not a part of this complaint. And this irrelevance goes to whether the probative value is going to be prejudicial. I mean, I know, look. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm only objecting because I need to preserve my objection for, for, for the... No, I, I get, I understand. I, I, I mean, it sounds, it doesn't sound good. That, I you know... Uh, exactly, it's prejudicial. And I want to hear what she has to say. So, your objections overruled. Okay. So, so getting news is the. Wait, wait, the question was um, drug trafficking. Drug. Okay. Okay. What did you base that statement or opinion on? So, because you're getting sued for it. So, three things. The first thing, Liliane Ruiz, who is the daughter of uh, the governor, who said that she didn't say anything, but she said, that Valdemar owned at airports and ports. He was ruling at airports and ports because he was involved in drug trafficking. Second, there was an article by Mario Carvalho, and there is, is on the book, The Chief, also, that Valdemar Garanhuns, the company in Uruguay, was using the same office as Cartel de Juarez was using to laundry um money and the third thing is like he is related to mineral uh, people mining gold mining in amazonia and they are under investigation for drug dealing his partner is under investigation for drug dealing with the people um it's called the, the operation was niva police federal it's a organized crime with, from the Balkans in, in partnership with PCC. PCC will be like the criminal mob in Brazil. So I have all the names. And his partner was Francisco Jovinaldo Mota Campos. So, so let me interrupt. So the point, I'm, I'm, the point yeah. I'm asking you, Maria, is that you I'm actually I'm had ground. There my objection again. Okay. What's your objection? Again, relevance, none of, 
none of this was uh, uh, there. Hearsay as well. What do you mean none of this? None of this was there. What does that mean? A part of the complaint, which she's stating. I'm re reading it. I'm reading um, right now. What is it say in the complaint? Let me and, look. Let me and look here's at it. She's stating paragraph eleven. Paragraph eleven, Your Honor. Uh, number three was involved in drug trafficking. I, I'm literally taking their their complaint and trying to show Your Honor that Ms. Caldera investigated, reported, re-reported, acts as a, a you know as a, a social media person, and these are things that. As I said, the First Amendment protects. How how is she going to prove the drug trafficking? But at least we're showing that there's no matter. Was involved in drug trafficking. Yeah, that's why we. I just gave you testimony of her basis. You put it in your complaint. I'm I'm preserving my objection. That's all. Oh. I know, but okay. No, I just to preserve my objection because I will explain to you after why it's not. May I continue? Keep going. Thank you. You, you're you're also being sued for saying that Mr. Nito physically hit you. Yes, he did. Not could you tell the court what? Could you tell the court why you made those statements? Because he did. He hit me. That's why I got involved in domestic violence movement to to try to help women and understand. Not only he hit me, but he gave me frontal, which is like chlorazepam to the maids. For twelve days after was, was what he gave her what? Uh, I think that's Xanax, chlorosapon. It's it's like Xanax. You just see, and 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 I was rescued by a. He drugged you. Yes, he drugged me for for I think two weeks when I decided to leave him, and uh, I made a complaint in Brasilia. I made a blood test, and the complaint just disappeared. And afterwards, every time I was go as I was being tracked, I made I I filed police reports, and nothing happened. Nothing happened in Brazil. And he has a transgenerational story because his grandfather, Moisés Caran, killed his grandfather. So let me move on to the next one. Um, this this one they they're taking a uh, I won't comment. Uh, it, you're also getting sued for defamation, saying that Mr. Nito ordered hits by paramilitaries. Where did you get that statement from? He himself, he said to me that if I was going to do anything, he would get Nakaharada. That's how I know about the power of Nakaharada. Nakaharada, apparently, I never met him, but he said that Nakaharada was helped him, and it was someone who used to help his father, was a coroner from his city, and helped him with the situation with his father's lover, who was being blackmailed for someone, and then the guy went there and killed him. And that's, he said firsthand, but Valdemar has a brother from this marriage, Federico, so he, if we go further with discovery... Well, Federico, let's stop, because we have a short amount of time. So you base it on your own uh, personal opinion, uh, uh, witness, right? Yes, what I okay, heard. Okay, so, so uh, Judge, the last two, I don't know if he even raised the death of defamatory, but I will, I will ask her about it. In paragraph 11, they said that you insulted Jair, I'm going to murder the names, Balancero, who served as Brazil's president from January 2019 through 2022, and even had said that he had an affair with, uh, meaning Mr. Nito, with the first lady, Michelle Balancero. Where did you get those uh, statements from? What did you base that opinion on? So friends of mine said that he was going out with a lot of women when he was divorced, and she was single. She dated also a lot of politicians. Actually, she had a, a son or a, a, she has a daughter from another politician, and she was not married to him. And when she met Bolsonaro, I don't know if Bolsonaro was, was married or not, but this is, this is they were single. It's it's not a defamatory. Like people can date other people. There is no problem. If people okay, so that so so that was that, your that was basically your opinion. Yeah, if if they take out of contest and say that he was going out with the wife of the guy when they were afterwards, it's not my problem. What I said is like they dated when they were single, and that's okay. Okay. And Bolsonaro, my opinion about him. Is the worst opinion is the same as I have of Trump. They are the same. So, um, 
I can say it's my opinion, it's my right to, to say I don't like him, I think he's corrupt, I think he's stupid, I think he hates women, I think all of this. And okay, so so let me, um, I'm going to move to the last area and then um, uh, opposing counsel has a right to answer your questions. Um, I submitted a lot of articles to the court, Your Honor. Um, there, there are various uh, articles dealing with uh, the NATO couples, both prior to their marriage and afterwards. Um, did you, uh, Maria, did you review any other press or articles to arrive at some of the opinions that we just talked about? Yes, but I can read more. Mr. Hold on, there's, a, there's an objection, Maria. When, when I know we're on Zoom, but I, I have to stop you because there was an objection. Just to preserve my objection, objection to those exhibits, again, hearsay, uh, they're using it for the truth of matter asserted. Um, once again, just preserving. May I continue, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Neto, between who he started this file and now, he already went to jail again for five or four days, and he's under investigation in Brazil for attempt of democracy and here for uh, offshores and money laundering. All right, so, so let, let, let's be specific because you, you, you lumped that together. Are you presently aware of any criminal investigations that are going on in Brazil with regard to Mr. Neto? Yes, and here. What, what are the ones in Brazil? What do they involve? Can you hold on a second? Hold sure. on one second. Sorry about that. Okay. That's okay. So I would, the question I left off, Judge, was um, was she aware presently what Mr. Nito is being investigated in Brazil because it revolves around some of the comments that she's made uh, and being alleged to be defamatory? Um, Maria, could, yeah. you, could you elaborate yeah. on that, please? Yes, he, he's investigated regarding regarding uh, democracy, uh, like the democracy, the, 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 like the Capitol Hill thing that happened here in the United States, the same happened in Brazil. He's investigated on being part of the conspiracy to create it. 
So that's why they took his passport on. That's why they went to his house trying to find documentation. They found out that everything was written inside of the party. That was the minuta. How do you say the minuta? The design of the, 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 what they were going to do was inside of the Partido Liberal. So yes, he's investigated by this, but he's investigated here in the United States also for other two things that just went to DC and to New York to give them documents and depositions. All right. Do you presently have any um, cases against any party controlled by Mr. Nito in Brazil? Um, a lawyer now is, will, will file in the OEA, which is the uh, court here, to human rights. All right, well, I, what I'm relating to is in the complaint, you allege that Mr. Nito stole money, your inheritance. Oh, yeah. He's, I, did, he's I, did not, I did not point out to the judge that there's a present lawsuit in, in, involving that in Brazil. So what does so, that statement mean? So he's fine. He wants he wants money from my my family inheritance. It's because he's he's suing me as a political party and him the political party and him are the same. So he's suing me as a political party, uh, asking for uh, money in my inheritance as a party. Okay. And the last area I want to ask you is, when you came here to the United States, were you under any protection by the U.S. government? Yes. I was. I, I came. I came with the help with Leiani Ayaldi, who was the ambassador of Brazil at the time. Uh, now she is in, in charge. She was lately in charge of Southern Command. I don't know if she's still there, but she was the ambassador of Brazil at the time. Judge, um, this as this is on the um, just on the fraud on the court. I, I think we have given you testimony that I will tender the witness. Uh, to opposing counsel, but the uh, the nature of what I gave is not not on the case, refuting the case, but solely on the allegations alleged to be defamatory, which we say um, uh, raise the level of fraud on the court or should be stricken uh, uh, by your by your honor. So I now tendered the witness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, what was your profession when you lived in Brazil? I worked for, I was a advertising, I worked in advertising. I, I studied marketing in Milano. Did you have um, many contacts in the press in Brazil? Yes, I have in, the, in Brazil and here also. Yeah, I worked in Vogue. I worked for 12 years. I was editor of special projects of Vogue. Do you know someone by the name of Tony Gomes? Tony yes, I know him since I was a kid. He's your childhood friend? Uh, we were raised in the same environment. I know him since I was a kid. Was he yeah. one of the reporters that um, that we're, we're discussing here today? Was he one of the reporters of, of the news article? Yes, this, is, this was in Brazil, in newspapers in Brazil, not in the United States. So everything that was, I think, published in Brazil by Brazilian media has to be judged in Brazil. Yes, it was a Folha de São Paulo. It was like the New York Times, yes. I even think it's bigger than New York Times. Um, do you recall the case that you opened in 2012 in Brazil to prevent Mr. Cosmeto from utilizing his assets because you were trying to divorce him again and to gain an advantage after signing settlement agreement in 2000. Can I explain? Yeah, that's uh, your objection. No, that's I don't even understand your question. Uh, say, it, say, ask your question again. I will. I apologize. Do you recall the case you 2012 in Brazil to prevent Mr. Cosoneto from utilizing his assets because you were trying to divorce him again? Okay, can I answer? It's not again. Okay, it's not again. There were, let me, you ask, now I will ask him. There was, there was stable union from 2003 until, to, from the end of 2002 until 2003, I was living in stable union. Even his lawyer 
uh, Mr. Marcelo Bessa wrote on his affidavit that what I, we had agreed in Brazil was regarding uh, stable union. Okay, we wait. We married. We married in December 31, 65, in Las Vegas. So I had two things. I had a stable union from 2002 until 2003, and I had a marriage from 2003 last year until 2004, July. So I had a marriage in the United States, and I had a stable union. Everything that was de decided in the stable union was settled, but not the marriage. The marriage- I don't understand because... anything she's saying, nothing. <laughs> I did not understand one thing she just said. May I don't clarify. know what she's talking about. May I clarify? I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, stable marriage, this marriage, that marriage. Stable, stable, stable I, I have marriage. no idea what she's talking about it's, and why it's even relevant. It was a common law marriage that they had. Uh, well, uh, under Brazilian law, they, they believe in common law marriage. Okay. They were married for... How long were you married for, Ms. Feldeira? Okay, we had, we had, we had. No, not a question. No, we're, yeah, it is the question. We, ha it's two different institutions. I was married in United States in December thirty-one, and this marriage was December thirty-one. What year? Two thousand and three. And I when lived. Did you and I lived. And I lived. And oh. I lived under stable union. And I lived under stable union in Brazil. I don't know what that means. What it's does that common, mean? Common law marriage. In Brazil. I, in I would object to the line. I don't know why it's relevant to the areas that we just went through. It's well, called a stable union. Okay. In Brazil, in Brazil, in Brazil, we have stable union. It's like when you live together, you have all the rights of the marriage. Okay, it's a common law marriage. Yes. And then you, so what happened with him is that from 2003 until, that, from 2002 until 2000, the end of 2003, I was living in common law marriage in Brazil, okay? In 2000 and in 31, December 31, uh, 2003, we married in Las Vegas. We got married in Las Vegas. Okay. Okay. I, not my objection. It, it's not really related to the direct. I, I, I think it's outside. I don't know why we're talking about this. Your Honor, you you allowed them to discuss background. I'm here trying to discuss background as well. Yeah, but they didn't talk about this. What What's the relevance? The relevance that they're not married, or no, they were no. married, or or what? She's been labeled a bad faith litigant twice, not yeah. just once, twice. Once in Brazil and once in Miami-Dade County courts, because she tried to divorce him twice to get money from him. No. So how do you, how do you, divorce, how do you divorce somebody twice? Exactly. She first had a settlement agreement in 2008. After her 2003 marriage, she was married for four months. This was 20 years ago. I'm still talking about Mr. Costa Mesa. Just knows him as, as if he was her best friend that both drug trafficking. On a daily basis. Judge, judge um, I, I would object to counsel testifying. I know you asked a question, but now it's argument. Who, who said she was a bad faith litigant? The court, the Sao Paulo court, the court in Sao Paulo, and the Miami Dade County Court here, because she tried to um, divorce him in 2012. And then she came here to Miami, Florida, and tried to divorce him in 2017. He was never even living in the United States, so it, um, the court found that there was it was dismissed for. Um, there was. Judge, there was Judge Ru may I interrupt so we have clarity. There's a docket entry. They, Ms. <clears throat> Ms. Caldera was represented by counsel. They moved for sanctions based on lack of service, and a sanction motion was granted. And the case was dismissed. She was pro se. It's, I can give you the docket number. It wasn't bad faith. It was sanctions for lack of service and no assessment. You could look at the docket. There's no fees. There's no cost. This is what we deal with. I, it, it, you can look at the decision. 
Uh, it had nothing to do with her being vexatious or anything like that. It, had, it was a 57105 based on lack of service, going forward based on lack of service against her and her attorney. So, um, I'll, be, I'll be presenting that court order as an exhibit shortly, but I, I'll continue. So, fiscal data, when, when did you divorce? Let's judge this line of question. Wait, divorce when? Wait, now just let me May, tell may, you. may I object, Maria, please? Okay. I think you just ruled on this before that it wasn't relevant to or brought up in direct. And she answered the question. So legally asked and answered, lack of relevance. Okay. How many of the cases that you say you brought against Mr. Costaneto in Brazil um, resulted in any conviction? I never brought any case. I, I, I made, I claim, I went to police report that what he was doing regarding domestic violence. He's the one who filed against me eight or nine times and every time was Liberal Party heir and or Costa Neto. He used, he used the legal system of the party in all cases. And I, I asked them, and Michael has all the cases with him, that, that was he was trying to slap me all the time. And she, which- she, she means slap suit, not, not figuratively slap, S-L-A-P-P. -P. Your Honor, I, um, I didn't think I was going to need this, but I have an exhibit that I would like to present to impeach the witness. She stated during direct that she um, she was physically abused, she was slapped, she gave police reports. Uh, till, till now, she didn't answer my question whether the police reports resulted in anything. Um, and I would like your permission to present her declaration in, um, in the Ethics Council hearing it, on July 20th, 2005, where she swore under oath that he never laid a hand on her. May I? Okay. Was it presented, was it presented to us as an exhibit? That's what I, that's what I just explained. Okay. I, 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 Judge, I, I, you know, I, I have no problem. Can you let him see it before today? No. Yes, he has it. This is the this is the same declaration that he says that um, she, that she made all of her defamatory statements under the litigation privilege. This, this is the exact same document that she's that he's stating that she's made the same exact uh, comments before. Just uh, give me the exhibit number. You, you I submitted pre exhibits. What exhibit number is it so I can look? I just explained that. So it's I not an exhibit, Judge. I would need to use it today. I see that she's, you know, not being truthful, and I would like to use it to impeach her. Does he have it? Show, tell him which one it is. He has it. Uh, I know which exhibit is it. It was, it was provided under, uh, during a discovery. It's not, um, it wasn't uploaded on, as an exist, as an exhibit today, because I didn't think it would be relevant. I, didn't I think know which why. exhibit is it? Tell, do you know which exhibit it is, Mr. Schlesinger? Judge, um, what she's saying is she produced it, I believe, in discovery, but we both did disclosures, as your court required, of exhibits, and she didn't list it as an exhibit. So it's not an exhibit. It's, Where is it? I don't know. <laughs> she said he, he produced it. it. it too. It, it's, it's in a Dropbox that was provided to counsel. Which exhibit number is it? That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm using it to impeach. It wasn't necessarily attached as an exhibit number, but this is this document goes exactly to the point that he's trying to make that everything that she stated was. So you don't want to show it to him before, right? You're about to show it to me. Is what you're saying? I can. I'd be more than happy to show it to him and then show it to you as well. Don't you think you should have shown it to him before? Isn't that if we were in the courtroom, wouldn't you have to walk over to the counsel's table and say, here's my exhibit that I'm about to show the judge before you show it to me? 
And then if he has an objection, it's a, a, to say, I've never seen this before. I don't know what it is. How, who's gonna, who's going to authenticate it? Where did she get it? What is it? Who produced it? Who, who made it? What is it? It's her deposition or, or uh, sworn testimony that she gave to the ex ethics council in Brazil. It's the same. Is it, is it in English? It's the same. It's in Portuguese. Cause it's Who translated it? Fifty-four pages. We have a translator later. We have a translator here today. It's one. This sentence. is not how I do things. That's fine. I can move I'm on. I'm sorry, counsel. I do not do things like this. Okay. I didn't expect her to. You this know, has been yeah. long set. We have a court reporter here. This has long ago been scheduled. Okay. You have to. There's case law about interpreting documents that are not in English. They have to be certified translated by a certified translator. You don't translate them in the courtroom. That's fine. I, I didn't think I was It's not that it's fine. It's the way things are done. I understand, and I'll, I'll move on. No, but this is a waste of time. Your Honor, I, I believe that this, these motions are also frivolous and a waste of time, but... Well, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what. It's 2.30. We still have a half an hour. However, I can tell you, Mr. Schlesinger, I've done, in the 18 years I've been on the bench, I've done a lot of motions to dismiss for fraud on the court. I don't know if this one lends itself to that. Okay. I'm not sure if the plaintiff's case is very strong. It is. I think that these parties... Look, just because he spent time in prison doesn't mean he did the things that she said she did. However, they were married and she saw a lot of stuff. And I don't know why he went to jail. You're saying it was political. I don't I don't know why he went to uh, he was uh, convicted and sent to prison. I don't know what was going on there politically. It was like 50, 50 congressmen. It wasn't just him. It was, there was a, a lot. It was, it was very political. Was he a congressman at the time? Yes. Okay. Then his party took over and pardoned him. That's not. Okay. Judge, I understand what you're saying. Um, what do you think, Mr. Schlesinger? I, 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 I think what I should do then, if that's your feeling, is, can we schedule a motion? I, I don't think I can grant this motion. I mean, okay. a well, motion I, I, to dismiss for fraud on the court, there has to be no doubt in my, not even a bit of doubt in my mind that there, that it's a very high standard. And I've granted them many times and been affirmed on appeal uh, on the ones that I've granted because I make sure that there are, there's no doubt that there was fraud. Uh, understand, Judge, that a lot of... I don't fraud. know, you know, so I don't know where the... You know, you want me to dismiss the case, but is it fraud or is it just... I, I, doesn't I, have a no, lot I, of merit. It doesn't have merit. Well, um, also, I didn't see their object... Their, um, their opposition until recently where they, they basically have everyone saying it's not true, which basically bolsters, and I, you have the case law on defamation, when someone says the person's a thief and the other person says, I'm not a thief, how do you prove it? And that's what First Amendment's about. So um, what I would ask, Your Honor, is that we, if we have a continued then hearing at another time on the motion to dismiss or at least to strike some of the sham pleading, there's some of these things like, he has been found guilty of, of money laundering. I mean, it, that's not in his complaint. I mean, there are public records that he's been found guilty. I, I okay. mean, and, and, okay. and, and, you know, I pointed this out to counsel. 
I pointed out that there's things in there they could have amended at any time prior to today, and then I would have to relook at it, right? Uh, but you know, they tagged it along with me withdrawing this motion until, without seeing an amendment. And I, I said, you know, well, listen, that's not how it's done. Do an amendment, fix what I pointed out. Like, you know, if she says she hit him uh, or he, she, he hit her, I mean, that's not defamatory. That, that's between the two of them. So, Your Honor, on a motion, motion to dismiss, I think you could look at some of these allegations in the complaint and decide as a matter of law if they raise the level of defamatory statements because it's undisputed he's a public fig figure. So then we have to show malice. And that's one of the reasons why I had Maria testify because you can see the investigation and some of the things that she said. So I don't know what, to, what I'll follow whatever Your Honor says uh, to do. That's, that's why we're here. Well, we're here on a motion to dismiss and motion to strike for fraud on the court. So that's, I mean, I, I'm not going to dismiss it for fraud on the court. If you want to have another hearing on a motion to strike some of the allegations, I'll do that because I think, I think this is going to be a tough complaint to prove. And also what I'd like to do is, um, the, I do, I think, I think the bar is very high for a, for a political, uh, Public, person. public public figure your your honor he it's he imagine a, look at what they say he, about politicians here he hasn't been admitted as a person you can't you can't you know people talk about public figures and it just it has to be something so you know well there's actually a statute yeah. that protects there's a slap suit statute that protects See, and then where was it? Was it here? Was it in Brazil? Was Albert. it, you know, then we get into the whole thing about you're suing her here for things Man. she said over there. Well, I mean. And are know, we applying uh, Brazilian law or U.S. law? What's, the, why is she getting sued here for something she said over there? The motion to dismiss has nothing to do with jurisdiction. First of all, second of all, all of her statements. I'm just asking you as a practical matter. I'm the judge on the case, and I have to decide what. Um, it's a it's a question that I have. I'll be happy to answer. Um, Miss Caldera was taking videos of herself throughout Miami, where you can see Miami everywhere. She also lives in Miami. We we don't dispute that the statements were here, Your Honor. I don't want to waste your time. Oh, they were here. Okay, yeah. that's all yeah. I want to know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, she, she, she's afraid to go back to Brazil. She, she won't go back. She wants to, but she she won't. So why so is that? Because of I, him? If I, if I, yeah, of course. If I may, Your Honor, Mr. Schlesinger did say uh, that money laundering uh, was was something that he was convicted of. Once again, this was pertaining to his 2012 conviction that had to do with a partic particular circumstance regarding another political party that was apparently paying other politicians to vote in their favor. That said, what she's claiming in her defamatory statements is that she was, he was money laundering for the Mexican cartel, which is completely defamatory. This is defa defamation per se. Throughout her whole spiel, she made I don't know how many stories and she gave interviews, etc. Each and every one of them have defamation per se statements. And so when Mr. Schlesinger wants to confuse the court by muddling the facts just because he had a convention in 2012, it's, it's really hard because I want to tell you that it's irrelevant, but it's, it's you know, I want to object to it. And well, it's important it. to know what he was convicted for. But if, because if he was convicted for money laundering and she said he was a money launderer, you know, she didn't just say that. She said that he was a drug trafficker. And he was I don't. I'm not. I'm, we're not doing that right now. I'm just saying it's it's important to know what he was convicted of. Yes. <laughs> and we, we did. We did provide. Um, Why don't you just admit to the court that he was convicted for money laundering instead of fencing 
and just say it. Right. I told you, I told you before. If he was convicted of money laundering, the money laundering count that you're suing her for gets stricken. Because obviously he was convicted of it. I, once again, I don't think it's the same. So it's not, all right, I, I, you'll have to prove to me why it's different. Okay. I, I All right, so have... so you want me to submit an order denying a motion for fraud on the court? And, Correct. And setting setting down uh, the motion to dismiss, which is a, you reviewing the complaint as it's there to determine whether it meets as a matter of law the def high burden on pleading for a uh, public figure. That's what you're asking. Right, right. Okay. We'll set another hearing on a motion right. to strike, and we could even do it by allegation. Uh, I okay. object to this, Your Honor, because Mr. Schlesinger wants. Mr. Costanetto uh, to be an admitted public figure, but to become a public figure under U.S. law, under Florida law, you need to go through steps and analysis. Um, he presented. Okay. Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I want him to. S this motion for fraud on the court is denied. He wants to set his motion to strike certain allegations. And dismiss, because there's just And to dismiss. There's a separate motion to dismiss. To, to he wants to set it for hearing. Yes. The motion, we, we don't have time. So the motion for fraud in the court is denied. Okay, got it. Judge, one last la la So go motion. ahead and, and set the other motions. How much time do you want for that? One hour. And the, la the last thing we, we have, and maybe you could just deal with it now. We have a, uh, uh, a disagreement on whether Mr. Nito, as a plaintiff, has to come to the United States. We've confirmed that he's, he has, still has his passport. Uh, he is the plaintiff. If you're seeking affirmative relief, you have to come here. Your, Your Honor, for the deposition, there's case law where when someone does not come, they're allowed to do... Um, Why can't they come here? I mean... We, we filed um, a response, and we, Mr. Mr. Schlesinger filed a motion to compel. I filed a response. I think I there's I think there's case law that says that when you're seeking affirmative relief, you and you're asked to come to the jurisdiction, you have to come. Your Honor, we also sought a protective order because of his current circumstances. Well, then uh, you can't seek affirmative relief here. Read what they were, do the research. We're, we're not here on the motion to compel them. Okay, I'm just, can he asked me can about I it. I, I, would do, I would do the research on when I you are a plaintiff seeking affirmative relief. You have to come to, the, how's he going to come to the trial? I did some research on plaintiffs, and most courts, most if not all courts, allowed for a protective order on uh, as to do it. The deposition through electronic uh, means and some of them even said that um as long as i'd like to well, how old is that case law i'll show you now i, I can open up can it's i manage probably during the pandemic too it, that's the case law that i saw was pandemic but no man i i don't think it was during the pandemic i i filed the this case law and i filed mr cosanetto's affidavit explaining the situation and I'll, I'll tell you which, um, which one it was. Yeah. See, Judge, I thought I had misunderstood. I thought he his passport was taken away, but we confirmed with lawyers in Brazil that it wasn't. And, he, and he's here now. You could ask him. So that's why I was going to I was going to actually agree to it because he couldn't get out of the country. But once I found out he did, and he, I would like the opportunity to sit across from the table hand documents to him, you know, videotape a reaction. And I love Zoom, but it's it's not like being in a courtroom or, or a deposition. And, and for due process rights, I think I have a right. Your Honor, this is docket entry number 56. We provided authority, supplemental authorities, Florida Highway Patrol versus Tejarano, um, 137, 7, 3rd, 619. Again, Mr. Slesinger, I we, we've explained to you and we've Provided, he even stated that Mr. Costanetto would be, um, it's in his sworn statement as Exhibit 2 of, uh, with the then, this was docket entry number 56. 
And in that case... Yeah, but that's the respondent. Look under when you're seeking affirmative relief in a jurisdiction, you have to be here. That's a respondent. I was looking at petitioner. A plaintiff is generally required to be deposed in the forum where the action is pending, but the law is not absolute on this point. Instead, it gives the trial court discretion to grant protective orders for good cause shown to protect the party from undue burden or expense. We're not here on this motion today, Your Honor, but if you'd like, I can argue it. I don't know what the good cause is. Usually, I cooperate with people, but he just doesn't want to come here. I've explained the good cause several times to Mr. Schlesinger, and I've provided, I've asked him for dates for Mitchell data. Till today, he hasn't provided me one date, Your Honor. I've asked him several times. That's not true. That's not true. And Ms. Caldera, he just, he keeps saying that he can only provide dates after Mr. Costaneto gets deposed. We've already told Mr. Schlesinger that Mr. Costaneto can get deposed at any time, as long as it's... Well, read the facts of this case. I did. He was, he was, he was, he was on active duty in the United States Marines. He was stationed in Florida. He got hit by an FHP in Okaloosa County. He was then transferred to Camp Pendleton in California, 2,050 miles away. The time came when FHP sought to depose him. It set an in-person depo at Fort Walton. After receiving the notice, he responded with a motion for protective order, saying that he's, it would be, it would be basically undue hardship. Your Honor, I can give you a brief summary. FHP opposed the motion, but it said his active duty service in the Marines, an involuntary transfer to California, and his willingness to pay the cost of the video conference and recording of the depo. I can give you a background on what... But it's different when you're a plaintiff and you live out of the country. He was living here. This is, I don't know. I think it's, that's tough. Why can't he come here? I'll explain. So as Ms. Caldera stated, there is currently an investigation on like 30 or 40 members of Mr. Costamento's political party regarding the Bolsonaro, where there was like a riot or something like that. They're trying to find evidence on whether they were, they were involved in inciting or et cetera, that violence. When the federal police orchestrated the search of the homes, Mr. Costamento was surprised because he was arrested. He had an old family gun that was previously registered under his son's name, but the registration had lapsed. Since then, the media has continuously stated that he was, he had an unregistered or illegal firearm. They're making it bigger than what it is. A completely politically charged also arrest. He was, and they also found a small piece of gold that's worth a merely like $2,000. These, this arrest is completely and totally unrelated to the defamatory statements, but because of that arrest, he does not have the ability to come to the United States. He is trying though. I have asked him to try to ask the court to give him leave and permission to come. He should be able to come by the, by the time of trial. But once again, I provided Mr. Schlesinger. I told him we can do the deposition in two weeks, but it has to be through electronic means. I told him, and then I asked him for dates for Ms. Valdetta and I have, I've received zero, zero dates. Which, because he wants to say that Mr. Costamento needs to go first, as if that's a rule in, under a court of court rule. Well, I did ask you as soon as discovery was over. Judge, Mr. Nito is here. He can tell you while you're, you know, instead of through his counsel, his passport is fine. He can travel. We, we confirmed it. I, that was my fear. Remember I, when, when we were asking for a stay of discovery, I said, 
I said, I'm going to have problems because you can't leave. But I, I wanted to take his deposition in person. He just doesn't want to come here, but he wants to sue over you. That's, that's not true. And I believe um, probably the, the thing on um, in-person only deposition in Florida solely to cause Mr. Cosmeto unnecessary, unnecessary burden and expenses. Um, he's Mr. Slesinger has How actually he have to come here for a trial. He like once again he is uh, attempting to receive some permission to to come. But Mr. Slesinger has told me in the past that um, when he was you know, attempting to get us to dismiss a case that he wanted, you know, the deposition to be very public, almost threatening to... Public uh, Judge, public. I don't know why she's attacking my character. I mean, I, this I, is I don't want to have this conversation. I, I'll tell you what, do the research about the plaintiffs Should I and, schedule, and, time and, time? Schedule, and schedule that hearing. Okay. Thank you for giving us I'll this I'll see time. you when you come back on the motion to strike. But Thank this you. one is denied. Thank All you. Right. Thank okay. you. Kim, okay, yes. Bye. All right, thanks. Bye, Chris. Thank you. Bye, Chris. Thank you.